Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing Bray Short Ribs with a Celery Root Puree. This is a long one, so let's get started. To start this dish, I have three pounds of beef short ribs that we're going to trim off any of that excess fat that's on the outside. This is already a pretty marbled piece of meat. There's a lot of fat throughout the short ribs, so we don't need that excess fat on the outside. Once we have that all trimmed off, we're gonna give this a healthy seasoning of salt and freshly ground black pepper. And you want to season all sides of your short ribs. That means the tops, the bottoms, and all the sides. I roll my short ribs after I've seasoned the two largest planes of it because some of that seasoning inevitably has fallen off. So just sop up any of that with the rest of it. Once that's all seasoned up, we're going to let that sit for 30 minutes because we want that seasoning to really penetrate through. Now I have two fresh bay leaves. If you can't find fresh, you can use dry. And I have seven stems of fresh thyme, and we're gonna make a bouquet garnier, which is just an herbal package. Um, so to do that, I've stacked the herbs, and we're gonna take a length of kitchen twine. I like mine long enough to wrap around the herbs at least twice. And to secure this, we're just gonna first tie it with a simple knot, and then we're gonna wrap this around the herbs two or three times, and then secure it with a square knot. Now this is going to make it easier to fish out these herbs at the end of our cooking process because we're just going to be left with those stems of our thyme because the leaves will have fallen off and this is just going to make it easier to fish out the stems and those two bay leaves. Once it's all nicely packaged up we can set that aside while we smash six cloves of garlic. We aren't going to mince this. This is a long slow cooking process. So we need substantial chunks of garlic so we're just going to smash these and then cut them in half. As I sit in that braising liquid, this garlic is going to get sweet and delicious. So just pop that in a bowl and we're going to set that aside. Next up I have two carrots. You can either peel these or just scrub them, it's up to you. But we just want to chop these into really large, rough chunks. This is just going to add more flavor to our braising liquid and we need to do the same to one large yellow onion. Now normally we would also add a stalk of celery, but since we're serving this over a celery root puree, I figured that's where that celery flavor would come into play here. Once all of our onion is cut up, we're ready to move over to the stove. So at this point you should be preheating your rind to 350 degrees and over medium heat in a Dutch oven, I've just added two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're going to start browning our short ribs in batches. We need the Maillard effect on this. We want to brown all sides. If we overcrowded this pan, it would steam the meat, which is not what we want to do. We want to get a nice sear on this so it seals in all the juices and adds another dimension of flavor. And when I say all, all sides, I mean the tops, the bottoms, those little small parts at the uh, top and bottom too, or the sides, depending on the orientation. So I prop them up against the sides of the Dutch oven just to make sure there's an even sear. Once that first batch is done, we can remove it and start on the second batch. And you're going to start noticing this beautiful fond on the bottom of our pan, which we want. After that second batch has nicely browned up, we're going to add in our onions and our carrots, and we're going to let this saute for eight minutes. We want those carrots to start to soften, and we want those onions to get a little translucent. At this point, you can add more oil to your pan if you've noticed it's gotten a little dry. Since we trimmed off all that excess fat, a lot of that fat didn't render. We're going to season with a little salt and a little black pepper. We don't want to aggressively season at this point because it's going to intensify as this braises. So we don't want it too salty at, at the end result. So just be a little moderate here. Now after eight minutes, we're gonna add in our garlic and let the saute for another eight minutes. Because this garlic is in large chunks, we don't have to worry about it burning like we would if it was minced. Next up, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of tomato paste and this is gonna add such a beautiful depth of flavor to our braising liquid. Stir fry that around for five minutes before we add in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're going to cook this down and cook that raw taste out, which should take about two to three minutes. Again, if you start noticing it's a little dry in your pot, add a little bit more olive oil in. After that raw taste is cooked out, we're going to add in one and a half cups of a dry red wine. 
Once that's all in, we're gonna start scraping all that fond off of the bottom of our pan because that is where so much flavor is hidden and you don't wanna lose out on that. Next thing goes two cups of water and we're gonna bring this up to a boil, still scraping the sides and the bottom of the pan. And we're gonna add in our little bouquet garnier so it can start releasing that herbaceous flavor into our liquid as well. Once this comes up to a boil, we can shut off the heat and start nestling in our short ribs and any of the liquid that's collected in our plate or whatever you've rested this on, that can go back into the pot. Once all of our ribs have found a, a home in our braising liquid, we're gonna cover this up with a lid, pop this in the oven, and forget about it for an hour and a half. This is a low and slow cooking process that's gonna tenderize these short ribs beautifully. Now after an hour and a half, we have to skim some of this fat off. So take it out of the oven, take off the lid, and just start skimming the fat off of the surface of your braising liquid. We don't want a greasy final dish. We want a beautiful braising syrupy liquid. So this fat needs to go. You're gonna be surprised how much fat comes out of this dish. I'd say that's about a cup and a half. So at this point, we're gonna flip all of our ribs so they get a little chance to rest in the liquid as well. We're gonna pop the lid back on and we're gonna let this go for another hour and a half to two hours in the oven. You're gonna start noticing there's some random bones that have fallen out. That is a great sign. Now during the last half an hour of the braising period, we're gonna start working on our puree. So this alien looking little root vegetable is a celery root and it has a mild celery flavor, but has the texture of almost a potato or a turnip. So we're gonna cut off those root ends in the bottom part and then just shave off that outer layer because that's not edible. Or maybe it is, I don't know. I just know I don't wanna eat that. We also wanna get into the nooks and crannies and get out any of that hidden root channel that's in our um, celery root. And once that's all cleaned up, we're gonna chop, we chop this up into a nice, even, small to medium dice because we want this to cook evenly. Since we are gonna puree this, we want this to cook at the same time. And we want a nice, silky, smooth, smooth, <laughs> I can't say smooth, smooth puree. Next up, I have two cloves of garlic. We're just simply going to smash and pop right into our pot. We're going to season with about a teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I couldn't find my fresh, so I'm using ground here. And then we're going to pour over enough whole milk just to cover all of our vegetables. Bring this over the, to the stove, bring this to a simmer, and we're gonna let this cook down for about 20 minutes just until that starts to break apart with a fork. I'm also adding a little bit more seasoning here. We are gonna season at the end as well, but I like a lot of black pepper in this. It just adds so much more flavor. Once our celery root is tender, we're gonna strain the milk out, but save that hot milk because we're gonna use that in our final product. We're gonna pop the root back into our pan and let it sit for a minute just to try it out a little bit. Once it's dried out, we're gonna add in four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Give this a little stir so that melts. Use room temperature butter if you can, or even melted butter. And then we're going to start pouring in our hot milk. We are not going to use all of our milk. We're just going to use enough to puree this into a beautiful, soft, silky puree. I'm using an immersion blender, or you can use a blender or a food processor. Just blend that up until you get a nice, smooth puree and season it with a little bit more salt and pepper. Give this a little stir and this is ready to go. Now that our short ribs are ready, we're gonna take off the lid, check on the doneness, and these are beautiful. When you see bones falling out, this is what you want. And I like to go in it and remove all of the bones. They should slide right out if this is cooked correctly, which this looks like it is. 
because they're just going to take up room on the plate. We're also going to remove our herbs that we've packaged up nicely. And now we can move on to plating. We're just going to lay down a beautiful layer of that gorgeous celery root puree. Then we're gonna start layering on our short ribs. I usually serve three per serving because they are so rich. That is, to me, it seems like a good portion size, but you can use as many or as few as you'd like. Don't forget to spoon over all of that gorgeous braising liquid. It's thickened up so nicely now, so it's almost syrupy. And there's my third little short rib we're gonna to add to the party. I'm just using a pair of kitchen shears to garnish with a little parsley because that color is so pretty on top. Now let's give these a taste. You don't even need a knife for these. The ribs are tender and just, there's so much flavor. There's such a richness to this dish because of first the ribs and then because of that braising liquid. The celery root puree is creamy and subtly celery and really a perfect pairing for this. But there it is. Very short ribs over a celery root puree. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for sticking out. This was a long one, I know. If you like this video, give it a like. If you loved it, subscribe and hit that notification bell because I put out new videos every Thursday. Until next time, happy cooking. It's so freaking good. Mm. All right, let me bring this Luke.